There has always been a double standard for women in makeup. If you wear too little, you're a prude. If you wear too much, you're a harlot. Where does this pressure to wear makeup come from? Michael Carter's article titled Facials, the Aesthetics of Cosmetics and Makeup proposes three reasons. The embodiment of formality, the expression of inner being, and the desire to increase sexual attractivity. 103. We as humans are naturally drawn to perfection. We strive to improve ourselves, so why would we settle for anything less than perfection in a partner? This frame of thinking has brought us to women wearing makeup to conceal surface level imperfections for ourselves and others. In mid 20th century America, there was an evolution in women's roles that they were expected to fulfill. Celebrity role models, or it girls, set a standard for women. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, women entering the workforce felt empowered and wanted to explore these liberties while housewives wished to serve their husbands and become homemakers. Nobles 3. One such role model for the liberated woman was Marilyn Monroe. She was a sexual being who used innocence and promiscuity to further her stardom. Most importantly, using her makeup as a way to increase her sexual attractivity. This is most evident when compared to stars with cleaner reputations like Audrey Hepburn, Grace Kelly, and Jackie Kennedy, who were all known for their elegance. In Freudian logic, these are the Madonnas and Marilyn Monroe is the whore of his Madonna whore complex. We will explore this ideology as I attempt to recreate Marilyn Monroe's makeup. As we begin our journey through Marilyn Monroe's makeup, her bold makeup look is complemented by her stark blonde hair. Trimper quotes Dr. Scretta's explanation of what blondes symbolize in her book, I'm No Angel, The Blonde in Fiction and Film. Blonde hair and black hair are the two poles of human nature. Black hair signifies virility, courage, frankness, activity, while blonde hair symbolizes femininity, tenderness, weakness, Passivity, 220. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, 1953, is a prime example of this polarization. Monroe's character Lorelai uses her femininity and weakness for diamonds to dig herself and her friend further into trouble. Jane Russell's character Dorothy is virile and charismatic, fixing many of Lorelai's mistakes. In Katie Klukas's article, the man behind Marilyn Monroe's iconic makeup, tips and all, she mentions that the first step for the eyes is to use white eyeshadow and highlighter, especially in the inner corner. Klukas' article then states that Whitey Snyder, Marilyn Monroe's favorite makeup artist, would then line her waterline in a special white pencil to make them appear larger. There appears to be a smoky nude eyeshadow color above her natural crease in an effort to make it appear higher. Next is her long, flat, and thin eyeliner. This technique would elongate her eyes when Marilyn Monroe would do her bedroom eyes by tilting her head back and lowering her eyelids. Klukas believes that it was a brown eyeliner used instead of a black eyeliner for a natural effect. From examining photos of her, Marilyn Monroe used natural false eyelash strips. These strips were then applied differently than we would today. Instead of placing the eyelash strip on the eye so that the eyelashes are angled up, Marilyn Monroe's eyelashes were applied so that they lay flat next to her natural eyelashes. Klukas' article reveals that her lashes were cut in half and only used on the outer half of the eye. This further elongates them. To finish the eyes, Klukas states that a brown line is drawn out from her lower eyelash line to simulate a shadow from her eyelashes. White is then put under the eyeliner and above the simulated eyelash shadow to define both lines. As seen in a still from Niagara 1953, this sultry eye makeup furthers the promiscuity half of her persona by accentuating her bedroom eyes and giving her an illusion of having siren eyes. Compared to Audrey Hepburn's doe-eyed makeup, they seem to be opposites. In a still from Roman Holiday, 1953, Audrey Hepburn's makeup opted for a lifted effect to open her eyes. The upturned eyeliner lifts her eyes, the brown eyeshadow follows the eyeliner, and the white eyeliner in her waterline 
makes her eyes appear large, gentle, and innocent. Moving on to Marilyn Monroe's base makeup. Klukas states that Whitey Snyder primed her face with Vaseline to create a youthful glow to her skin. In David Lackey's article about the Max Factor Museum's collection of Marilyn Monroe makeup memorabilia, he quotes a story from Joan Collins about Marilyn Monroe and Whitey Snyder. When she first came to Fox, she wore far too much makeup, particularly her base, which was far too thick and heavy. And she had old-fashioned, bee-stung lips and unplucked eyebrows. Whitey and she worked on her look together. He taught her to put Vaseline on her face to create the illusion of depth and luminosity. I've applied a dewy foundation light shadowing around my features and highlighted and concealed with a skin tone concealer. Klukas mentions that Whitey Snyder would contour her cheekbones, jawline, and nose. He would then add a coral blush to her temples, nose, and cheeks to add a youthful blush. I'm first applying a cream blush and will later apply a powder one after I've powdered my face. Finally, we will add Marilyn Monroe's infamous mole to her left cheek. Compared to Grace Kelly, whose base makeup was matte and featured a hint of light pink blush as seen in a still from Rear Window 1954, Marilyn Monroe's makeup was glowing and youthful in this still from Gentlemen Prefer Blondes 1954, while Grace Kelly's was matte and mature. Grace Kelly had no evident moles or freckles, whereas Marilyn Monroe was known for her mole. According to Klukas, Marilyn Monroe's lips were created using five different shades of red to sculpt her perfect lip, topped with white powder but only in the middle to highlight her lips. The glossy sensual red color draws attention to her slightly parted yonic lips. Richard Dyer mentions the sensual nature of her lips in Heavenly Bodies, Film Stars, and Society. My argument is not that quivering lips must be vaginal symbols, but that they are a piece with other formless aspects of her image, which together can be read as the visual analog for a basic conception of female sexuality as itself formless. Dyer, 53. Jackie Kennedy was known for her classy lady makeup style once she became the First Lady of the United States. The signature nude-colored lip she wore evidently on display in a photo shoot titled Jacqueline Kennedy from Michael Ox Archives became a staple throughout her husband's presidency where there was an alleged affair between him and Marilyn Monroe. Her red lip color, seen in a still from The Seven Year Itch, 1954, contrasted the classy ideals by accentuating the plump, swollen look. The combination of different effects from Marilyn Monroe's precise makeup routine solidified her innocent yet sexual persona, along with defining her as a sexual idol, especially when compared to Madonnas of her time who had a cleaner reputation of elegance. The idea of furthering and emphasizing one's persona with heightened makeup is even now used today by stars as they pursue stardom of Marilyn Monroe's level. Using promiscuity to elevate fame is routine for stars of today, but they wouldn't have the road they have if Marilyn Monroe had not paved it for them decades ago.
somebody else but you.